Now we will discuss ulna. This bone is homologous with the fibula of the lower limb. It is also having upper end, lower end and intervening shaft. Before going to discuss about it, we should keep this bone also in anatomical position. And we should say which side bone is it. How we have to keep it in anatomical position. Upper end is expanded and it is having two processes. Here one process, here one process. This process is what we call coronoid process. This process is what we call polycrinal process. And lower end is narrower than the upper end. And it is having the head and stylar process. Lower end is having head and also stylar process. Upper end having coronoid process and polycrinal process. And also one notch is present here. This articular notch. This articular notch what we call proclear notch. Then how we have to keep it in anatomical position? See. So, this is anatomical position. How I have kept? This is the trochlear notch. This trochlear notch should be directed forwards. Right? And this border. This border is introsis border. Introsis border should be directed laterally. Because it is medial bone. So, that introsis border is lateral border. Then, this is the styloid process. This is styloid process. This styloid process should be directed downwards. And it is present posterior and medial to the head. This should be present posterior and medial to the head. Clear? If you consider all these points, you can easily keep ulna in the anatomical position. Proclear notch anteriorly, intracess border laterally, head directed downwards and the styloid process also directed downwards and styloid process should be present posterior and medial to the head of the ulna. So, if you keep bone in this position, this is anatomical position of ulna. So, this is right side ulna. Clear? So, this is right side ulna. Now, we will discuss about different features of ulna. See here. It is having upper end, lower end, intervening shaft. Now, we will see what are the features of upper end. If you take upper end features, here one process is there, here one process is there. This process what we call olecranon process. This process is what we call coronoid process. If you coming to the olecranon process, this olecranon process having upper surface, that means superior surface, here anterior surface, here medial surface, here lateral surface, and here posterior surface. So, this is posterior surface, this is lateral surface, then this is anterior surface, this is medial surface and this is the superior surface. So, this superior surface having posterior rough part, this posterior rough part giving insertion to the triceps muscle. Here this rough area is giving insertion to the triceps muscle. So, here insertion of triceps. Then anterior smooth area is there, no? it will be covered by bursa which prevents the friction between the tendon of triceps and the bone. So, here bursa will be present. So, this is about the superior surface. Then, this is anterior surface. This anterior surface is articular and it forms the upper part of the trochlear notch. That is it about the anterior surface. Then, coming to the posterior surface. This is posterior surface. This posterior surface is triangular in shape. This apex of the triangular shaped posterior surface continues down as posterior border. It continues down as posterior border. So, this upper part of this posterior surface will form a point of elbow. When you keep elbow like this, this point is there, you no? Know, this point, this one. So, that is about the posterior surface. Actually, over this posterior surface, there will be bursa. That bursa present in between the skin and the posterior surface. Usually, this bursa will be inflamed in case of miners. That means, miners means the people who work in the mines. That inflammation or the disease, what we call miners elbow. Because they crawl with elbow. Because they will not have roads in the mines. So, they have to crawl through very narrow canals. So, that is what they crawl with elbow. Which leads to inflammation of this bursa which is present over or which is present in between the posterior surface of the olecranon process and the skin. That condition what we are calling minor elbow. And when students are sleeping, they will also keep the elbow like this and they sleep. That is what 
this bursa will be inflamed that condition what we call student's elbow so either student's elbow or minor's elbow inflammation of bursa which is covering the posterior surface of the olecranon process so that's it about the posterior surface then coming to the medial surface see this is the medial surface of olecranon process this medial surface of olecranon process continues down as medial surface of the shaft of the ulna medial surface continues down as medial surface of shaft of the ulna then coming to the lateral surface see this is the lateral surface this is a posterior surface this is a lateral surface this lateral surface of olecranon process continues down as posterior surface of the, the shaft of the ulna medial surface of the olecranon process continues as medial surface only medial surface of shaft of the ulna but lateral surface is continues down as posterior surface of the shaft of the ulna that's it about the olecranon process clear then coming to the coronoid process this is a coronoid process this coronoid process also having superior surface anterior surface medial surface lateral surface what are the features of anterior surface of coronoid process see this is a coronoid process it is having anterior surface superior surface lateral surface and medial surface if you coming to the anterior surface anterior surface is triangular and it contains one tuberosity here here this tuberosity what we are calling ulnar tuberosity in the radius radial tuberosity is there here ulnar tuberosity this ulnar tuberosity and the anterior surface of the coronoid process gives insertion to the brachialis muscle then coming to the medial surface this medial surface continues down as medial surface of the shaft of the ulna that's it then coming to the lateral surface this is a lateral surface this lateral surface having notch here what is this notch this notch is radial notch for what for the articulation of head of the radius so it is having anterior margin posterior margin anterior margin will give anterior part of the or anterior slip of the anterior ligament posterior part or posterior lip will give attachment to the posterior slip of the anterior ligament like this right then this articular surface will be articulated with the disc shaped or circumference of head of the radius so this circumference of the head of the radius will be articulated with the this radial notch of ulna which is present in the lateral surface of coronoid process right then just below this articular surface you can see one depressed area here this depressed area is for the accommodation of radial tuberosity during supination and pronation see here here tuberosity is there if there is no any depression here during supination and pronation it will obstruct so that to give room for the radial tuberosity here one depressed area is there so this area or this depressed area just below the radial notch is for the accommodation of radial tuberosity during supination and pronation then just behind this depressed area you can see one crest here this crest what we are calling supinator crest this supinator crest and area in front of the supinator crest otherwise supinator crest and the triangular area which is present in front of the supinator crest giving origin to the supinator muscle clear so that is about the lateral surface of coronoid process then coming to the superior surface see here this is the superior surface superior surface of the coronoid process is giving contribution for the formation of trochlear notch that means upper half of the trochlear notch by olecranon process lower half by coronoid process so superior surface of coronoid process will form the lower part of trochlear notch clear so that's it about the upper end now we will discuss about the shaft see intervening shaft having different borders actually three borders only from the ulnar tuberosity one border is coming like this this is the anterior border see this is the anterior border this anterior border at the lower one third of the shaft of the ulna it goes medially and ends at the medial part of stylet process so this is anterior border then sharpest interosseous border this is the sharpest interosseous border it gives attachment to the interosseous membrane that we know this sharpest interosseous border is descending down 
and reaches to the medial aspect of the head. So, this is the interosseous border. Then, posterior border we already studied. See, this triangular area or the triangular posterior surface of olecranon process is continuing down as posterior border and this posterior border ends at the base of the styloid process. It ends at the base of the styloid process. So, these are different borders. Now, we will discuss about different surfaces. See here. The surface which is present in between the anterior border and the interosseous border. This surface what we are calling anterior surface. Then the surface which is present in between the anterior border. This is anterior border. This is posterior border. In between these this surface what we are calling medial surface. This surface is medial surface. Then if you turn like this. Here is the posterior surface. This posterior surface is present in between the posterior border and the interosseous border. This surface is posterior surface. Right? Actually, this posterior surface further divided by one oblique ridge and one vertical ridge. So that it has been divided into upper part, lower part. Again, lower part further divided into lateral part and medial part. See here, this vertical ridge. Here is the oblique ridge. So, this is the lateral part, this is the medial part. Very simple. Posterior surface is present in between the posterior border and interosseous border. It is further divided by oblique line into upper part and lower part. Upper part, there is no subdivision. Then, if you come into the lower part, this vertical ridge dividing the lower part of posterior surface into lateral part and the medial part. Here, so that is it about the posterior surface. In the anterior surface, you can see foramen here. This foramen is nutrient foramen. This nutrient foramen is directed upwards. So, lower end is growing end. Then, we will discuss about lower end. See, this is a lower end. Lower end having head, posterior and medial to this head, one projection. This projection what we call styloid process. So, here is styloid process and here is a head. This head articulated with the ulnar notch of lower end of radius so that it forms an inferior radio ulnar joint. And how superior radio ulnar joint will form? Radial notch of ulna articulated with the head of the radius and forms what? Superior radio ulnar joint. But here ulnar notch of radius articulated with the head of the ulna and forms the inferior radio ulnar joint. So, like this, these bones will be articulated. Now, if you see, this is the styloid process. This, this rough area which is present lateral to this styloid process, this part, it gives attachment to the apex of articular disc of this joint here. So, this is the lower end. Lower end will be articulated with the ulnar notch of radius and forms the inferior radial ulnar joint. But lower end of ulna will not give contribution for the formation of this joint because, see here, this is styloid process. And this is the inferior margin of ulnar notch of radius. From here to here, from here to here, like this one articular disc will be there. This articular disc is separating the ulna from the wrist joint. That is what whenever we are telling about wrist joint, we should not include the lower end of ulna. Because lower end of ulna will be separating from the wrist joint by articular disc which is attaching to the lower margin of ulnar notch that means base of the articular disc attaching to the inferior margin of ulnar notch and apex will be attaching to the styloid process so that like this articular disc will be there here joint is there so that ulna will not form wrist joint that means ulna will not give contribution for the formation of wrist joint clear so that is it about the lower end of ulna right now we will discuss about attachments as we already discussed, this is anterior surface and the ulnar tuberosity. Ulnar tuberosity and the anterior surface of coronoid process. This area is giving insertion to the brachialis muscle. Then, what is this crest? I have already told you. This is a supinator crest. Triangular area which is present in front of the supinator crest. This area giving origin to the supinator muscle. Brachialis insertion supinator muscle origin. Then, medial surface of the coronary process. Here, this part is giving 
origin to the flexalitarum superficialis. Just below that, there will be origin of pronator teres. That means ulnar head of pronator teres. Clear? These are the attachments to the coronoid process. Then, if you come into the olecranon process, this medial surface here, this medial surface is giving origin to the flexor digitorum profundus, flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor digitorum profundus and flexor carpi ulnaris. Actually, flexor digitorum profundus having very extensive origin. It is taking origin from the medial surface of the olecranon process, coronoid process, and the total medial surface and the anterior surface. Along with that, this posterior border also, it is having very extensive origin one by one. Medial aspect of the olecranon process, medial surface of the coronoid process, medial surface of the shaft of the ulna, anterior surface of the ulna, that means upper two third of medial and anterior surface of the ulna, posterior border of ulna. All these are the origins of flexor profundus. Then, now we will see what are the attachments of anterior surface. This anterior surface attachments I have already told you, upper two third of anterior surface and the medial surface, giving origin to the flexor digitorum profundus. Then, lower one third of anterior surface having one oblique ridge here. See here, it is very clearly visible, oblique ridge is there. This oblique ridge giving origin to the pronator quadratus muscle. See here, pronator quadratus origin is here and insertion is here. Pronator quadratus muscle origin is here and insertion is here. That is about the anterior surface attachments. Then medial surface attachments, I have already told you, flexor digitorum profundus. Then coming to the posterior surface attachments, lateral aspect of the coronoid process and upper part of the posterior surface, this area, this area is giving insertion to the anconius muscle, here is anconius muscle. Then lateral part of posterior surface is giving origin to three muscles, here one muscle, here one muscle, here one muscle. Right. What are those? Abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis longus, extensor indices. This medial part is not giving any attachment, only lateral part. Upper part, abductor pollicis longus, middle part, extensor pollicis longus, and here, extensor indices. Right. If you see the posterior aspect of radius also, here abductor pollicis longus, here also abductor pollicis longus, that means abductor pollicis longus taking origin from the posterior surface of ulna, posterior surface of radius and entrosis membrane. Then what is this? Extensor pollicis longus, this is extensor pollicis longus. If you see the posterior surface attachments of ulna and radius, you have to remember one word here, both ulna, radius, ulna, this is a mnemonic. Both one word, ulna one word, radius one word, ulna one word. So here four. Both means abductor pollicis longus, taking origin from both bones. Next after both, ulna. Extensor pollicis longus, taking origin only from the ulna. So first both, then ulna, then radius. Radius is giving origin to the extensor pollicis longus. Then again ulna, what is that? Actions are indices. We have to keep these muscles in order. Then we have to keep that mnemonic. So what is that? How we have to keep these muscles in order? Abductor pollicis longus, actions are pollicis longus, actions are pollicis brevis, actions are indices. So in that case, abductor pollicis longus taking origin from both. Actions are pollicis longus taking origin from the only ulna. Extensor pollicis brevis taking origin only from the radius. Extensor indices taking origin only from the ulna. Okay, of course, along with adjacent entrosis membrane. So, these are the attachments of posterior surface of ulna. Clear? Then, if we come into the posterior border of ulna, posterior border of ulna giving attachment to the thumb muscles by aponeurotic attachment. What are those? Both flexor and actions are carpi ulnaris. Both flexor and actions are carpi ulnaris. Along with that, flexor 
digitorum profundus flexor digitorum profundus and flexor carpi ulnaris and extensor carpi ulnaris all these muscles they become saponeurosis and they attach to the posterior border that's it about the attachments now we will discuss about ossification of ulna the shaft and most of the upper end of ulna ossifies from the primary center that primary center appears at the age of 8th week of intrauterine right, right, right. whereas olecranon process ossifies from the one secondary center which appear during 10th year of life actually it is scale like which joins with the rest of the bone by 16 years of life that means it appears at the 10th year and it fuses with the rest of the bone at 16 years of life then lower end of ulna ossifies from the another secondary center which appears during 5th year of life which joins with the shaft of the ulna at 18 years of life actually upper end is fusing with the shaft at 16 years of life and lower end is fusing with the shaft at the 18 years of life that means lower end is fusing lately because of that lower end is growing end of the bone then coming to the applied aspects this trochlear notch of ulna will be articulated with the humerus like this so it forms a firm foundation for the superior radial ulnar joint on this foundation only superior radial ulnar joint will works this is the medial epicondyle this is lateral epicondyle this is a olecranon process when the elbow is extended these three tubercles in same line but when you flex the elbow like this see here we can see one triangular area between these three bony prominences see here lateral epicondyle medial epicondyle and olecranon process so here one triangular area is formed okay we can see that when you bend also see here this is the medial epicondyle here is lateral epicondyle here is olecranon process here we can see one triangular area the triangular area what we are calling isosceles triangle this triangle what we call isosceles triangle whenever fracture happen or dislocation happen this isosceles triangle will be disturbed that means we cannot see the isosceles triangle fracture of olecranon process also will happen when you fall on the elbow that means when you fall on the olecranon process this may be fractured then the shaft of the ulna may be fractured that time only ulna may be fractured or both bones may be fractured that time we should reduct very carefully it should not be cross union that means cross union means what when both bones are fractured this end fuses with the ulna this end fuses with the radius so that cross union should not be there if that cross union is happened there is no supination pronation because of improper development of lower end of the radius this head of the ulna becomes more prominent because of the improper development of lower end of the radius this deformity what we are calling made lungs deformity made lungs deformity and when you fall on the outstretched hand with little flexion of elbow that time there may be dislocation of the elbow joint that means this trochlear notch will be displaced from the trochlea and olecranon process will be shifted to posteriorly which leads to elbow in the fixed position that means elbow will fix in the slight flexed position right so these are the few applied aspects related to the ulna that's it for this session